Welcome to Align Christ-Centered Yoga. My name is Linda, and I'm so grateful you're practicing with me today. My question for you today is, how well do you endure during the marathon situations of life? The situations that go on and on and on. Nine months ago, I committed to Invisalign. And my orthodontist looked at my jaw and my teeth, and he told me it would be a 12 to 14 month process. So I agreed to that. And he ordered a tray of brackets, and each time I would switch out the brackets every 10 days, every seven days, I was flying through this tray of brackets, and I knew I would finish in December, and I was going to be done five months early. So he looked at my teeth in December, and he said, great job, teeth are moving beautifully, we have just a little more to go. I was disappointed. We took new pictures, he ordered a new tray of brackets, I was sure it was going to be three or four more. No. 21 more brackets. I'm going to finish right on time, about 14 months after I started. And I was so disappointed because my teeth look fine now, but the bite's not right. And the expert, the orthodontist knows there is much more work to be done. So often in life, we come across these situations where we think we are almost there. We think we are there, and we're not. And God knows that we're going to be disappointed. And Paul prays this in Colossians. He prays this over the church. He prays this over you and me. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience. Endurance and patience. How do we find that? We find that by God filling us with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. So I invite you today in this practice of slow strength to adjust to this idea of endurance and to tap into the wisdom of the Spirit as he encourages and instructs and convicts and transforms. Come to a comfortable seated position, finding your sitting bones, maybe elevating your hips up on a blanket or a prop. Begin to find the strength of the body as the legs press down into the mat. Maybe you can feel the tops of the feet or if your legs are crossed, you know, the outsides of your legs pressing against the mat. Notice the heaviness of the hip. Begin to find the strength in the abdominals from hip to hip as you anchor in the transverse muscles and from pelvis to collarbone as you anchor with the rectus abdominis. Closing your eyes, begin to notice your natural alignment in the curves of the back. Begin to engage the muscles of the back as well as you support the core. Begin to find breath. So can you find this place of engagement with the abdominals where there's still room for the body to move and breathe? Begin to feel the length of the spine opening up between each vertebra. Top of the head rising towards the sky. Stay here for two more breaths. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. And feel the breath expanding the body as you inhale. And 
Let the hands come down to the side and begin to connect movement and breath as you inhale, the arms rising up and overhead, gaze following the hands as you exhale, hands coming down, head bowing. And can you lead with breath? As we move through the practice today, I invite you to pace with this slow breath. One more time as the arms rise and fall. And bring the hands to the legs and begin to gently tilt the hips forward and back. And as you tilt the hips, again, can you find that engagement in the muscles of the back and the muscles of the abdominals? And back and forth here a few more times. And then anchor into the sitting bones and find that tall alignment again. And then gently bring your shoulders forward and inward and towards each other. And then draw them back and down and feel the arms moving in towards the shoulder sockets. And back and forth here a few times, just beginning to find this strength as you contract through the chest, through the pectoralis here, pectoralis major and then draw those shoulders back, tightening up the muscles of the back. And one more time here, and as you draw the shoulders back, can you maintain a sense of space between the shoulder blades? Let the hands come out to the side and begin to find cat and cow, engaging all of these muscle groups as you tilt the hips forward and back, as you round the shoulders forward and draw them back. And add the movement of the head so that as you come into this cat, the chin tucks towards the chest. And as you move towards cow, the nose reaches towards where the ceiling meets the wall in front of you. And back and forth here. And one more time. Let the hands come down. So coming off the block, I invite you to bring any props that you have towards the front of the mat, bring the feet together. And maybe lift and lower the knees a few times, just noticing how tight you are through the inner thigh and groin. And if you're tight like I am and these legs come up, you know, maybe you support with a block. Can you find your sitting bones again and find length in the spine? And then hinge forward at the hips. Again, drawing the arms in towards those shoulder sockets, letting the shoulder blades glide down the back, but keeping them wide. And then staying here, finding whatever stretch you're finding in the groin and the inner thigh, bring hands to heart and can you find strength in the upper body? Where are the muscles working in the abdominals and the back? And stay here for two more breaths. And bring the hands down to the feet and now round over. And let the head come down. Holding onto the feet, maybe the arms can nudge those legs into a slightly deeper stretch. Notice what happens if you engage the abdominals. One more breath here. Gently rise up, hands underneath the legs and bring those knees up and down. And then bring them up, move the blocks and props towards the front of the mat, and meet me in table. 
So engage through the abdominals. Find a little pocket of air in the palm of the hand as if you had a blueberry underneath it. Draw the eyes of the elbows in, the shoulder blades back towards the hips. From here, find cat and cow. Again, engaging all of the muscles of the abdominals in the back as you tilt the hips, as you round the shoulders, and leading with your breath. And can you, as you find cat and cow today, find strength in each? So this can be a very restorative sequence. But today, let's find a strengthening sequence in cat and cow. Crunching the abdominals, contracting the muscles of the upper and middle back. And two more times here, cat to cow. Get me back in table and find a strong table. And curling the toes under, can you bring your knees up just about a half of an inch? <laughs> and find the strength in the arms and the legs and the abs and the back. And release. Tops of the feet to the mat, child to table. Finding length in the spine, pressing down into the mat with the forearms and the legs. And rising back up into table, curling the toes under, knees rise up just about a half an inch. And then come into this first downward facing dog. So knees to rib cage, head drops, so the ears are in between the arms, begin to shake the head out. No. And yes and pedal through your feet. Taking a deep breath in, draw the heels up and exhaling, bring the heels to the mat. And as we settle into this first downward facing dog today, again, really thinking about the strength of the pose. So imagine the fingers reaching towards the front edge of the mat, the toes pulling the mat back to the, um, so you're kind of splitting the mat. If there was a line or a wrinkle down the center of your mat, you're smoothing out that wrinkle, pushing forward and back with hands and feet. Begin to draw the shoulders, arms in towards the shoulder sockets, shoulder blades wide and gliding down the back. Begin to Tighten up the legs a little bit, engaging through the quadricep muscles as the knees come up towards the um, hips. Taking a deep breath in, come into plank and drop down to the knees and just warming up a little bit more here, come into a kneeling plank, come down to the mat. Bringing the forearms to the outside edges of the mat, rise up into sphinx, exhale down to the mat. Back and forth here two more times, connecting to breath, taking your time. And rise into sphinx and stay here. Pressing into the tops of the feet, pressing into the forearms, engaging through the abdominals as the shoulder blades glide down, finding breath. And exhale down, hands to rib cage, and come up through table and into downward facing dog. And the next inhale, take the right leg up. And drawing the gaze forward, bring the foot in between the hands. Bring that back knee down and up, lightly tapping the mat. Notice what's happening in the psoas muscle today, that hip muscle that crosses the front of that left hip. And as you're ready, let that knee come down, top of the foot to the mat. So let's engage the muscles here. So as you bring those hips a little bit forward and up in the back, 
Feel the engagement of that psoas muscle, the stretch in the front of the hip. Imagine the inner thighs drawing in towards each other. And add a little bit of weight at the base of the big toe in the front. From here, take a nice deep breath in. Arms rise high, palms together, and let the shoulders rise and engage through the abdominals here. So again, across the hips. And the belly button draws in and up, and the rib cage draws down and towards the spine. Hands to heart. Stay here, lean forward with the body, find the muscular engagement of the upper body, and stay there for two breaths. Where do you find stretch? Where do you find work? Taking a deep breath in, bring hands to either side of the foot, raise that back leg, press into that left hand, sweep the right arm up as you twist to the inside of the front leg. Again, drawing the shoulders in towards each other, drawing the shoulders down towards the hips. Notice where the gaze goes, maybe it's up towards that rising hand, maybe towards that mat. what's right for you. Exhaling, bring the hand all the way around, meet me in plank. And from plank, come down to your knees, and maybe it's kneeling plank, or maybe you're going through eight-point pose, grasshopper pose. So if you're here, the hips come back over the knees, and then you just drop the chest towards the mat, keeping the shoulders above the elbows. Glide about three inches above the mat so that those elbows stay low and come into a low cobra, tops of the feet pressing into the mat. Exhale your way back to downward dog. So as we go through this today, take whatever options you need. If you need to stay in that kneeling plank and sphinx, make it as strong as you can and stay there. On the next inhale, left leg rises high. Gaze comes forward, foot comes all the way through the feet. Back knee taps down and up lightly. One more tap. And let the top of the foot come to the mat and begin to find the strength and the stretch here. So again, the hip points drawing a little bit forward and up. Imagining the inner thighs drawing in towards each other, maybe a little bit of extra weight right at the base of the big toe of that front foot. And sweep the arms up, shoulders over hips, palms together overhead, and bring hands to heart. And engage through the muscles of the abdominals here, keeping those legs strong, and just lean forward. So you're just coming forward far enough that you find the work in the upper body. And stay there for another two breaths. Where do you find work? Where do you find stretch? Where does your mind go when you get uncomfortable? As you're ready, hands to either side of the foot, raise the back leg up. Go ahead and press into that left hand, right hand, sorry, twisting towards the inside of that left leg. The Left arm rises high. Exhaling release, meet me in plank. Just working through all of our options here. Maybe you're in chaturanga now. Maybe kneeling plank, maybe eight point pose. If you're in chaturanga, again, those elbows stay just below the shoulders, arms pulling in towards the shoulders. Shoulder blades gliding down the outside of the back. And then pressing through the tops of the feet, rising into that upward facing dog. From upward facing dog, curl the toes under and meet me in downward dog. Let's pedal through the feet again. Move a little bit right to left. How does the body feel? Taking a deep breath in, heels rise, exhaling, heels come down towards the mat. Again, can you find the strength in downward facing dog? 
pressing the edges of the mat away from each other. Drawing the shoulders towards the hips and the hips towards the shoulders, the hip creases reaching to where the ceiling meets the wall behind you. On the next inhale, right leg rises high. Gaze forward, foot comes all the way through the hands, rise up into your lunge. Let's find the strength of the lunge, hand to the thighs, knee is over the ankle. Gently mudge the muscles of the knee, muscles, nudge the muscles of the leg towards the knee. Shoulders rise up over the hips. Take the back leg to the sky and then just a micro bend. I invite you to bring the arms all the way up towards the ceiling, palms facing in. Let the shoulders drop in and hug towards the body. And then gently just take that back knee down towards the mat. So find this place where that front thigh is parallel. It's going to depend on how low you go. It will depend on your body. And then from here, take those hands down behind. And can you rise into a warrior three, all of the weight in that front foot, extending with the abdominals all the way through the spine and lifting that back leg up. And then slowly come back down into that lunge again. And slowly drop that knee towards the mat. And one more time here, finding that warrior three, all of the weight into the front foot. And this time, bringing the arms forward if you have balance and rising up into mountain, but sweeping that back leg through, knee rises up. Imagine the foot pressing against an imaginary step here and bringing that left foot down to the mat, hands to heart meeting me a mountain. Find your breath. Check in, noticing the position of the feet, feet hip width apart, parallel to each other. Can you find strength in mountain today, pressing at the base of the big toe, the little toe, and the heel? Find the engagement of the transverse abdominals, hip to hip. Find the lift in the abdominals as the belly button draws into the spine and up. Feel the heaviness of the shoulders as they drop down towards the hip. Notice that you can engage the muscles of the back if you press through the fingers. Open up a little bit in the palm of the hand. And then keep that engagement in the back as your hands come back into prayer. Deep breath in, arms rise. Exhaling, find your forward fold. And then hands to shins, rise up. Let's stay here. Again, finding as much length as you can from the top of the head to the hip crease. Neutral position of the spine, supported with the abdominals. Bringing the hands back behind you. Take two breaths here. Where do you find the strength in the pose? Where do you find the stretch? Can you find neutral position of the spine? Exhaling, hands come down to the mat. One foot back and then the other. Meet me in plank. And from plank, find your flow down to the mat. Keep it strong. Into your back bend. Meeting me in downward facing dog. Checking in, how does downward facing dog feel? What do you notice? On the next inhale, the left leg rises high. So gaze forward, foot comes all the way through into your lunge and rise into your high lunge. Hands to thigh, nudge the muscles of the thigh towards the knee, the shoulders back over the hips. Again, this back thigh presses towards the sky and then a micro bend in the knee, arms rise. Shoulders draw down towards hips. Arms hug in a little bit. Gently drop that knee down until that front thigh is parallel to the mat. 
from here, come into your warrior three. All that weight's gonna come into that front foot. Press into that front foot, rise into warrior three. Again, draw that leg behind you, find your lunge, and drop the knee towards the mat. One more time here. That leg comes all the way back. Maybe the arms come forward this time. And then rise into mountain and the back leg comes to the front, knee rises up, find balance here. And bring the foot down, mountain pose. Closing your eyes, check in again and find your mountain. What do you notice? Can you slow the beating of your heart by slowing the exhale? Can you keep the mountain strong and keep the breath flowing freely through the body? One more breath here. What muscles can you engage a little bit more? Deep breath in, arms rise, exhaling, forward fold. Hands to shins, rise up. Just float the hands lightly on the shins and find that nice long and strong back. Exhaling, come down, meet me in plank. Find a strong plank, stay here. Go ahead and take that right foot on top of the left. Press the um, toes around the ankle and gently draw that heel back for a little stretch in the calf. Other side, so just a three leg plank with a little extra calf stretch. And then come down to the mat, however you choose to do that. Find your back bend. And meet me in downward facing dog. Stay in downward facing dog for two breaths, adjusting whatever you want to adjust to find a little more strength and connection in the pose. And the next inhale, let the right leg rise to the sky. Go ahead and meet me in a three leg plank. And then draw the knee in towards the chest. Give me a little bit of an upper body twist as that knee reaches towards the opposite elbow. Gently come back to center, let the leg rise to the sky, three leg dog. Drawing the gaze forward, bring the foot all the way through the hands, rise up into lunge. Find your strong lunge. Hands to heart. I invite you to find a low twist, and if that doesn't work for me, you can come into a high twist. Hinge at the hips and stay here for a breath. How much length can you find in the spine? And then as you find your twist, can you bring the arm to the outside of the leg? But today, instead of finding traction, which we sometimes do, can you float that arm and engage through the abdominals? Maybe extending that back leg a little longer, the heel towards the mat. Finding your breath. One more breath here. Release hands down, rise back up into your lunge. Gently draw that back knee down. Again, that front thigh just stays parallel to the mat. Press into the front foot as those hands come down to your hips. Find your warrior three, woo, and your balance. Rise back up into mountain as that knee comes through. Foot presses towards the floor. Just imagining that you're stepping down on a step. And hands to heart. Let that foot come down to mountain and find your mountain pose. 
So without changing anything, what do you notice? How can you find more strength in the pose? Can you slow your breath down? Make it more three-dimensional? Taking a deep breath in, arms rise, exhaling forward fold. Hands to shins, rise up halfway, finding as much length as you can in the spine. Exhaling down, meet me in plank. Stay in plank. Maybe just drop one knee down towards the mat and bring it up. And the other knee towards the mat and bring it up. And two more times here. The knee just gently drops and lifts. And can you keep the body still? The muscles of the upper back strong. One more time. The muscles of the abdominals and the lower back supporting you as well. And then find your way down towards the mat and into your back bend. and meet me in Downward Facing Dog. And adjust into your Downward Facing Dog, and I invite you this time to find release in the pose. So what does that feel like? You're still supporting the pose, but where can you find a little bit of stretch or even rest? In the next inhale, the left leg rises high. Gaze forward, bring the foot in between the hands, rise into your lunge. Hands to heart. So find that strong and balanced lunge. I'm a little wobbly here. Wobbles are okay. Hinge forward at the hips and find the strength in the abdominals in the back here. And then use those oblique muscles to bring you across and around. So again, you have lots of options here. You can be in a higher twist. You can create the traction with the arm and the leg. Or maybe you float that arm an inch outside of the leg. And find your strength here. One more breath. As you're ready, come back to center. Bring those hands behind you. Press all of your weight into that front foot. Rise into that slow warrior three. Maybe the arms come forward as you rise into your mountain, but that back leg comes all the way through. Thigh parallel to the floor. and then gently bringing the foot down to mountain. Hands to heart. Closing your eyes, if that works for you. What do you notice? How can you adjust the pose to find more strength? Maybe to find a little more height in the body or to feel the connection with the mat and the earth a little bit more. Maybe there's an engagement of the quadricep muscles or a light dropping of the hips and the glutes. Deep breath in, arms rise, exhaling forward fold. Hands to shins, rise up halfway. Exhaling, come down one leg back and then the other. Meet me in plank and I invite you to stay in plank. And pressing into that left hand, go ahead and spin over to the side and raise that other arm up. And you have options here. So maybe the 
top light comes in front of you for a little more support, or maybe the top leg lifts. One more breath here. Exhaling, come down to plank and into downward dog. And stretch into downward dog for two breaths. And we're going to repeat that. So come into plank on the other side, pressing into that right hand, right foot, spinning over and around, left arm rises up. So again, what's best for you? Maybe stepping in with that top foot for support. Maybe lifting that leg. Find your balance and your strength. And I usually say no shaking, but in a slow strength class, shaking is fine. We are working to exhaustion here. And release, let that leg come down. Meet me in plank. This time, knees to the mat, child to table once. And meet me in child. So in child's pose, go ahead and turn your fingers underneath, reaching the wrists towards the front of the mat. And gently let the shoulders draw back towards the hips. And find your breath. And then bring the forearms back down to the mat. And start in a strong child's pose. So can you press down with the forearms and the shins and the tops of the feet? And as you breathe, can you breathe into the back of the body as well as the front? And then begin to soften the pose. So maybe the knees come out to the side and the forearms Come to the mat or behind you. Just finding whatever works best for you. Where are the legs? Where are the arms? Massaging out the forehead. Where have you needed to endure recently? How can you use the knowledge and the wisdom of the Spirit of God to help you in that journey? Stay here for another breath. And as you're ready, gently pressing into your hands, rise up. And bring the feet forward. Taking the feet hip width apart, lightly resting on the hands with the hands behind you. Find a lower body twist. Release any remaining tension in the back, rolling out any tension in the glutes. As you're ready, come forward with the legs, come onto your back and bring a block. I'm actually gonna ask you to bring it back towards where your head will be and come all the way down onto your back. From here, shins are parallel to the floor. Gently bring them down about two-thirds in one direction. 
and two thirds in the other direction. Maybe turning the head in the opposite direction. And can you control this with the oblique muscles? So rather than leading with the knees, go ahead and lead with those oblique muscles. Exhale into each twist. And meet me at center. Go ahead and bring the feet down to the mat. Let's find a bridge pose as those fingers reach towards the heels, but not touching the feet a little bit in front of the knees. Find a neutral position of the spine, but engage the abdominals. And then begin to come up, if you can, one vertebra at a time as the hips lift and you roll down the spine until you're resting in the shoulder blades. And exhale out of this. And one more time here in and out of bridge. There are lots of different ways that we can use bridge for strength. And today we're going to focus on the glutes. So rise up into your bridge one more time. Let the hip points rise up to the ceiling and then begin to engage the glute muscles. Adding a little hamstring and quadricep to it as well. Press into that right foot and extend that left leg long. So imagine that left heel pressing into the knee and the knee pressing into the hip. And find the contraction of the hamstring and the glute on that right side. And imagine that the heels are reaching towards the fingers and the fingers reaching towards the heels. And then bring that left foot down and slowly come out of your bridge. And let the back relax on the mat for one full breath. And notice the way that the body has settled onto the mat. As you're ready, engaging through the abdominals, lift up one vertebra at a time. And then as you come into the peak of that bridge pose, begin to engage and tighten up the glutes. This time, pressing down into that left foot, engage that hamstring, extend that right leg long. Again, imagining that that heel is drawing um, away from you, but the knee is drawing into the hip. And can you keep the height of that bridge for one more breath? And then let the foot come down to the mat and slowly come out of the bridge. Taking another deep breath here, notice the way that the back has settled into the mat. Can you relax the glutes? Finding that block. Lift up just enough that you can bring that block underneath your back. So as you slide it underneath the back, it will be above the tailbone and below the spine. It's going to support you right on that sacrum bone. So find that place and adjust the block or the body if you need to. So as you stay here, can you open up the front of the body, softening the muscles of the chest, the pectoralis major and minor, finding release shoulder to shoulder. Softening the abdominals and the muscles of the back as the weight of the body comes into the block from the sacrum bone. Can you melt the muscles of the glutes, of the hips? Softening them as they melt over the block. 
And just hold a light connection to the mat with the shoulder blades and the heels. Are you holding tension in your hands? Can you relax your fingers? Take another two breaths here. As you're ready, press into your feet and lift up just enough that you can move that block and come down one vertebra at a time. And as the back settles into the mat, notice where there is connection and where there is space. Gently bring the knees in towards the body, the hands lightly on the knees, and draw the knees into the rib cage and away, just restoring a neutral position of the spine, a natural arch to the lower back. And as you're ready, extend the legs long. Settle the lower body and Bring the hands up towards the ceiling, reaching, 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 palms facing in, and let the shoulders thump down to the mat. And one more time. And then let the hands come lightly down to the side of the body. Consider turning the head from the top of one ear up and over to the top of the other. Just a final massage for the back of the head. A final release for the neck. And settle into Shavasana. Where have you found encouragement in your journey? Where have you seen God at work as you have endured? Invite the Holy Spirit to continue to guide you, to continue to speak wisdom into your life as you soldier on. I invite you to stay here a little longer if you can, if you need to move on with your day. Bring back movement, wiggling fingers and toes, rotating wrists and ankles, perhaps turning your head side to side. And then that next inhale, bring arms up and overhead and reach fingertips to one wall and toes to the other and stretch. And as you're ready, bend your knees and roll over onto your side. And stay here for a breath. And 
gently come up to sitting, crossing your legs in front of you. Finding your sitting bones. Finding alignment. And checking in one final time, body, mind, and soul. What has changed during this practice? What has stayed the same? Accept it as it is. Taking a deep breath in, arms rise, palms together, and exhaling, hands to heart, bowing your head, joining me in prayer. Father, we are so thankful for the encouragement that you bring us. We know that living life in this world is not always easy. And we know that often we think we are at the end of a journey when it is only beginning. We thank you that you are always with us, that you are indwelling, and that your spirit continues to give us the wisdom that we need to move forward. We thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, the sacrifice that unites us with you, that you will never leave us or forsake us. And it is in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, that we pray. Amen. Thank you for practicing with me today.